Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm 26 years old from Delaware County, Pennsylvania. And I'm Adam. I'm 26 years old from New Jersey. And this is our testimony of how Jesus Christ saved us. So starting from where we were at when we met, um, well, I guess I'll take it a little further back. I was not raised in any religion um, or spirituality, really. I came from a family who believed in, you know, ghosts and things like that. So that was kind of um, a part of my childhood. I remember seeing things, um, spirits, ghosts, whatever, when I was younger. And I guess that kind of created like a curiosity in me. And so probably from, I think it was like fourth grade, I used a Ouija board by like sixth grade. I was um, like trying to do like seances, but not really like knowing what that meant. So I definitely always had an interest in spiritual things um, and a lot of big questions that I didn't have answers to. Um, so when I was in like, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, I struggled a lot with like mental health issues and um, feeling like just that spirit of rejection and loneliness and like no one understood me, that feeling of like, I would go through seasons where I had friends and I didn't. And when I did have friends, I always felt like I was like the lowest in the group. Um, so yeah, just rejection and you know trauma, like all of us have in different ways. And so towards the end of college, I kind of hit a, a low with my mental health and that is when I just like fully dove into the new age and um, just got really deep into um, yoga, meditation, um, like moon rituals, crystals, tarot readings. Um, I eventually ended up doing ayahuasca a few times, which is a basically a psych psychedelic from plants and um so I did that a few times I was really just trying to heal from my past and um seek the truth um mm -hmm. you know yeah so that's kind of where I was at when I met Adam I was actually doing um tarot card readings and what you would call like channeled readings which is like hearing from spirits which I now know are demons and then you know giving a reading to people so i kind of did that like on etsy and on instagram and stuff so i definitely was pursuing a spiritual career a spiritual business and um that's like what i was all about that's what i was completely obsessed with that dominated all of my thoughts was mm -hmm. ascending raising my yeah. vibration spirituality i read i don't even know how many books i would just like just blow through these books nonstop. I don't even know how much money I spent on books and tarot cards, oracle cards and uh, crystals. So that was yeah. my life and my identity. Mm -hmm. I identified as somebody who was super spiritual, a light worker, star seed, a white witch, a good witch, basically like all of those things. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to heal myself and make the world a better place, but I really didn't know that I was in deception. Yeah. Um, I had absolutely no idea. So I yeah. met Adam and that's who I was. I was like hippy dippy, <laughs> spiritual, like doing all that. Good and witch. then, yeah, <laughs> so like, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and so um, when, when we met, I was, you know, raised Muslim, so I was still Muslim at the time. Um, and how, you know, I was raised, my dad is Arabian, my mom is Greek Orthodox. Um, they divorced when I was in sixth grade. So same, similar to you, like mental health all crashed down. That's actually when I read my first like uh, spiritual book. It was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. 
And so that's when I started to do like meditation. And right around that time, that's when I started to really like get suicidal um, and like have a lot of issues that way. Um, and so like, you know, high school goes and uh, then I get into college. I go to uh, theater school in Manhattan um, and I'm doing like hot yoga all the time. You know, there is there's a real um, with with Islam, you can really uh, meld it with, you know, that spirituality of new age because there's a sect in Islam called Sufism, which um, is very spiritual, um, you know, and, and it opens you up to that realm more so. And I was like, oh, like, you know, th maybe this is the truth, mm -hmm. you know, because I, 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 I fell away from practicing, like praying five times a day. But then when I got into college, like there was a father wound that I had that, you know, my dad is the one who's a Muslim and, you know, I wanted to spend time with him at the mosque and, I also want to get closer to my, my heavenly father, you know, and so that's the only way I knew how. So by the time that we met, um, I was, you know, praying more, you know, not always five times a day, but I was praying, yeah. practicing, mm -hmm. um, and, and very, and I was, I was looking to like you, you know, make the world a better place, but, yeah. um, but through film and I was getting really, really, really obsessed with film. Yeah. Like I went to theater, you know, so yeah. So like. He was living in, uh, did you, I don't know if you said it, Brooklyn. No, no, yeah, I didn't okay, say yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so he was living in Brooklyn, New York. Um, the way that I was kind of pursuing spiritual business and, like, really just enlightenment and all that kind of stuff, you kind of were through, like, I'm going to be a filmmaker. I'm mm -hmm. going to be, like, successful in New York City and, like, yeah. in this industry. So, like, that's where we were at um, when we met. Both, I don't think I touched on it, but, like, same thing, like, um suicidal ideation in the past yeah. i had a suicide attempt and like self-harm and you know depression and just like all that in my past so we were really just like wounded people mm -hmm. trying to find fulfillment in the all things that we yeah. thought like we could find fulfillment in um so yeah when we met um we hit it off right away we pretty much started dating like instantly <laughs> after our first date we pretty much became a couple <laughs> and i had moved so i was living like in delaware county which is just outside of philadelphia and he was living in brooklyn new york this is 2020 and this was 2020 pandemic things are weird <laughs> we were only one year out of college so i was working at whole foods he was like do you want to move to new york with me i was like i'll quit my job at whole foods <laughs> like sounds good one um, month in. yeah <laughs> So that's where a lot happened. Um, basically, we feel like looking back, hindsight, God was showing us the darkness mm. that we were in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like things just exploded. So basically, um, we were living together in Brooklyn, doing all the things you mentioned. Also, like we both smoked weed. Um, we did do mushrooms together like one time. Yeah. So we had all of these spiritual doors open. He's praying to Allah. I'm doing tarot cards, crystals, like, it's, like, a melting pot of false religion, <laughs> like, and so what happened was Adam started to change, um, he became, he became, like, super manic out of us all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and obsessed with this film that he wanted to make, and also he became, like, more obsessed with islam like yeah you were praying before you would wash before you pray and i just was like completely fine with that because really anything but christianity Jesus. like <laughs> you know so i was like oh he can be muslim and i can do this and like it's fine um but yes yeah, so we became manic and one night he i don't even know how to like start really telling yeah, us no, no, like I, you were possessed yeah, like demonically heavily, heavily, heavily and i know there's like a difference between you know demonized possessed like you know there's all, all kind of like debate about that but i mean like what you what you see in a horror movie with possession was actually the level that you were yeah. um where he was you know bang, trying to bang his head against a cement wall and i was just trying to stop him from doing that um, he was talking to things that like, yeah, and, and in the to, room. To, go, yeah. to go back for a second, because I want, um, when you were saying about like, you know, I was getting more into Islam at the time, yeah. um, that like literally I was, um, pr I thought I had to, you know, uh, pray these surahs, which are like verses in the Quran, uh, which is what you do when you pray. I thought I had to do that constantly in my yeah. head. 
and that's what like got me like I wasn't sleeping you know yeah he was not sleeping he was like I could look into his eyes and they like the color was mm. gone and it was just black yeah. and I felt like he was like literally in a different dimension and yeah. I was like I couldn't reach him I would try to I would try everything I'm like I just couldn't reach him and so that led up to this night that we're talking about. And I I want to mention that uh, really when things started to get crazy is I, I had a Bible. And oh, it yeah. was my brother's Bible that he had from Uganda. Mm -hmm. um, and I literally ripped the first page of the New Testament. And then right from then, I feel like Jesus just let me just fall, free fall yeah. into the darkness. Yeah. So he was manifesting heavily talking yeah. things out in the room just literally going out of his mind and the tv animated literally it turned on to a thing that was like a trigger yes. specifically to uh poems that i was writing at the time which was yeah. like really insane this just yeah it, it almost sounds like we're making <laughs> it up but like it was it was actually the most wild thing ever so he was trying to cut his eye out yeah he was trying to bang his head against the wall uh, uh, there, we could go into so much detail, but basically whatever yeah. was, you know, possessing him wanted him to kill himself. Yeah. And that was very clear and hurt me, hurt our relationship. Yeah. At one point, Adam did lock me out of the room. Yeah. And. Because I, I didn't want to hurt you. Yeah. I just. He knew enough to like do that, but then was just taken. Yeah. And so this went on for, I think it was a good eight hours. Meanwhile, the whole time I am playing a sound bowl. <laughs> I'm burning sage. I'm. Trying to fix it. I'm doing everything I can, but I'm also, like, completely losing it. Like, I was just, I had to tackle him to the ground at one point because you were trying to run off. Like, it was insane. I had reached out to a friend who was also very heavily into the new age. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And it's so funny. Now, looking back, she was like, okay, I have this friend who said that in these situations, you have to talk to Jesus you have to ask Jesus to intervene now she was not saying Jesus as in the son of God she was saying Jesus as in like a new age ascended master mm -hmm. so I actually was calling on Jesus but not you know as God and it's like so when, when you go to that, Jesus he's the demon slayer yeah that's what literally we were told he's like <laughs> Jesus is the demon slayer and so um yeah it went on and on for a long time I really didn't want yeah. to want to call anyone because you know i knew that people you know it's it's a you're either on drugs or you're crazy and there's yeah. no like possession there's no spiritual you yeah. know spirituality in any of it so i really didn't want him to get like thrown in a mental hospital or prison or whatever so yeah. i ended up um he threw himself down the stairs yeah hardwood steps yeah so i ended up calling when a paramedic police came this was during the pandemic so he ended up getting um yeah so, so so when when that happened so pretty much you you were out of the room and then what happened was i literally there was a little demon in the room with me there was chains oh, and yeah. all that it was ridiculous i heard the sounds and i was like closing my eyes like you heard chains that's what's yeah on literal the chains yeah not a you know and so then I ran out of the room. I was running all over the place, and that's when you called. Yeah, because we were living in a apartment in right. Brooklyn with like four or five other people who yeah. were like had girlfriends and boyfriends, like a and, full house. Yeah, and Adam was running around and in my underwear. Yeah, like just gone. Yeah. Threw, tried to throw himself down the steps. So, anyways, yeah. I called a paramedic, and um, the cops came. They took Adam into a, like an ambulance, put you down in a stretcher. Cause yeah. at this point he was resisting arrest. He was gone. Like, yeah, this dude, one of the, one of, one of the police officers had a mask because of the pandemic. Yeah. And like me, you in ripped my it under, off. I just ripped it off and then yeah. immediately they pressed me up against the wall and I'm yeah. like, just, you know, out of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um so then I, I'm just freaking out at this point. Yeah. Um, I, Wanted to get on the stretcher with him and um, go to the hospital, but a man, I'm, honestly, hindsight, I really do think it was an angel. Um, all of the paramedics and police officers are, they were noticeably 
tall and buff, almost like military looking. Mm. They were very rude, you know, like just New York City, like they were just desensitized to these sorts of things and my oh. crying and like they were just they just did not care. They've seen probably way crazier things happen in that city. But there was this one smaller, gentle uh, man who I went back to, into the house to get shoes to go onto the um, ambulance to go to the hospital. And he just met me at the doorstep and he said, um, it doesn't make sense for you to go to the hospital because they're not going to let you in because of the pandemic. But Adam is going to be released in the morning uh, because he took ecstasy mm. and he literally did not take ecstasy. Yeah. And that's how, you know, it's an angel because what happened was when I was on the stretcher, um, uh, there was, there was rumblings and I could hear someone say like, well, if he doesn't have anything, like if he's not taking anything, then he's going to be going to, to jail. Yeah. Um, and so I heard like a whisper and no one was in the ambulance at the time. I literally heard someone say to me, ecstasy ecstasy and so i started yelling out ecstasy, ecstasy from ecstasy. the ambulance and then yes so it's like literally an angel because yeah. no one would have known yeah he was just so different yeah. and like looking back i don't really remember him interacting with the others anyway so i he calmed me and i yeah. was like okay i'm not gonna go to the hospital um the next day, Adam got released. Yeah. For and also while I was there, the devil was still trying to take me out. I was yeah. reciting, you know, surahs, um, the Al Fatiha, which is the one that Muslims recite in every prayer, and I was trying to crack my neck every, in this like, stretcher. In the stretcher as yeah. I was going into the hospital. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, you did get released that time, and then yeah. he ended up a few weeks or months later. You know, things were just spiraling. I was reading books. I was doing everything in my power in my power, which is the problem, and it with new age and everything to try to heal Adam because he, so you did, uh, he did end up getting diagnosed with bipolar schizoaffective yep. disorder, yeah. put on extremely high doses of medication. He was, you were That's institutionalized for two weeks. Yep. Um, and you stayed on that medication until a year later, which is when we, you know, had our encounter, I had my encounter with the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> Yeah, I was trying everything. Um, hypnosis was a big thing that I was getting into, and I was actually going through training to be a, um, a hypnotist. Basically, it was like I believed in past <laughs> lives, so I had thought that it was a past life issue. Um, I never believed in the diagnosis. That was the thing. I always kept pushing, like, you're not crazy. You're going to get off of this medication. This is spiritual, but I didn't have... Christianity, I didn't have the yeah. truth as a like guidepost of, of what to do. Um, we did, he did have a friend who was Christian who, um, you know, talked to his parents and was giving us prayers to pray, like, you know, our Father who art in heaven. Yeah. Um, so we, for a brief time, we were praying that and yeah. then we stopped. And there was always like a peace we felt at ease when we were, um, praying that prayer yeah. but again i was so deep in the new age he was muslim like there was it no didn't relationship stick. there was no relationship so that was like probably the first few weeks after and then yeah. it didn't stick so um for the year the year the like whole year or whatever yeah. we were trying to heal adam in new age yeah. ways but i never thought he was crazy yeah um and bipolar yeah. schizoaffective, it's like, this is your, it's a life yes. sentence. Yes. You know, it's your forever That's what they kept saying. You, Because Adam would say about getting off medication yeah. or trying to start weaning because, I don't know if you want to get into it. wanting to wean like, from the start. The, the side effects, like you felt, yeah. you you felt like a zombie. Like they had Literally. him on insanely high doses. Oh my goodness. Of these a things. thousand or something. You, like, I don't even want to say, like you gained like 50, oh, gained pound, 50 pounds in like... A month and a I half, was, two I months. was 150 and I was 200, 205 yeah. after literally 30 to 60 days. Yeah, like a very short period of time. So then you were, that adds to the depression. And then, yeah. so like it put him down, like low. Yeah. Um, so the, over the course of that year, we were trying to heal him through the new age ways. Yeah. And then, so... In two thousand, no. <laughs> in two thousand and twenty-one, at this point, yeah. So, I had been following somebody on Instagram who was like a big, like almost like new age mentor of mine, mm -hmm. and um, she had a large following, and she pu got publicly saved. Um, she shut down her business, and she was like, 
everything that I'm doing is demonic. I'm giving my life to Jesus. <laughs> In short, that's what happened. And for some reason, it just hit me as the truth. And I was like, I just remember that time. I was like, Adam, like, I think that this is true. I don't want it to be true because that would mean everything that I've done mm. for all of these years is false and demonic and I didn't even know it. But it just, the Holy Spirit was just working in me. And so yeah. I started a prayer journal. And for the first time ever, I started praying directly to God, not knowing who God was. I mean, honestly, I thought God was like, a source ball of light that we separated from and we went back to like i had a crazy concept of god it was not these are true but like real beliefs yeah that i thought exactly yeah. yeah so like i didn't even know what i was really who i was praying to i just started a prayer journal every day i wrote dear god dear god and at this time my reality is crumbling i'm doubting what i'm doing i'm getting i'm sinking low into depression and anxiety and all of these things. And so after probably like a good month and a half of this prayer journal, it just, the Holy Spirit just came upon me in our like little apartment living room. And I cried for three days mm. on the floor. Yeah. Like I knew that I knew that I knew that Jesus is God, that the Bible is true mm -hmm. and that I have to get rid of every single thing in my apartment because it was yeah. thousands of dollars worth of crystals, tarot cards, all of these things, all of these altars. I was huge into ancestral worship and I just like, there's no other way to describe it except, you know, what the Bible says, like the scales were completely removed yeah. from my eyes. And I was like, wow, my whole life, I didn't really get into it, but I was big into politics, into activism that's what like I went to college for. So like I really thought Christianity was a evil white man's religion really. <laughs> and that like Christianity was everything that was wrong with the world. Mm. And so I was the last person really that I thought would ever be a Christian. I remember yeah. crying to Adam and saying like, I don't want to be a Christian. They're boring. <laughs> they're this, they're that. Like I had such negative opinions of Christians, even though I was so open-minded towards everyone else. Yeah. Um, and you, so at this point, Adam had not had this encounter. So no. I was like, okay, like you don't have to be a Christian. Like, and yeah. I'm like but the Bible's true. Like, <laughs> I was like, if I believe in Jesus and I, if I believe in the Bible and that is the word of God, that makes me a Christian. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> and so I, that's, I just felt such sorrow. Mm. Um, for I felt so ashamed of what I had so much repentance been in. and just yeah. humbling and, yourself. And the devil was really just I mean, like I said, I had demonic altars pretty much set up all over my house. Yeah. Um, so I was getting very, very attacked and I yeah. felt shame. I wanted I genuinely wanted to die. Like yeah. I think more than I ever have in my life. I the devil wanted me to kill myself so bad yeah. because I felt like my life is a lie. It, it was just like a Truman show moment. And I was like, I just couldn't handle it. But, yeah. um, God got me out of that. And mm -hmm. through prayer and repentance and calling on the name of Jesus, I felt like peace, like never before in my mm -hmm. life. I meditated every single day, an hour minimum. Mm. I never felt peace like that in my life, yeah. like literally coming home. And so that's what happened with me. And, and then I tell, I told Adam, cause he's like there with me through this whole thing that like, you know, Jesus is real. The Bible yeah. is true. And so because and that's, Islam. And that's when yeah. I sort of was like, all right. You know, you can say all that, but I got to like superimpose it next to the Quran. I got to start digging into it, comparing. And I was like, throw the Quran away. It's Literally. false. <laughs> I was like, and he was, I was like, like, but I should up. just read a little bit more to see. Yeah. Um, and then. Because, yeah. because ultimately, you know, my, the belief system that I grew up, like Jesus, like it's everything about Jesus is true short of the cross and it's like that is the most important part so yeah you you didn't have a problem believing in jesus it was yeah. that jesus is god yeah um, exactly so yeah uh this time adam on his own through like our own research had been slowly weaning off of his medication mm -hmm. but he was not completely off of it and so 
um, right after I got saved. And not to mention, yeah. I forgot to mention this, but like literally while I was, um, the devil tried to take uh, me out again because when I was um, in it, like this was before I started weaning off of it myself, um, there was one moment when I went full cold turkey. And when you go full cold turkey with antipsychotics, you will die. I'd never do that. Yeah. Never do you that. You could die. Yeah. yeah no, no, like, like I, I should have 100%. And I even yeah. met someone like who's Like, people who have seizure, seizures. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, I went cold turkey for, like, two days. And, like, my my whole brain was cold. And I was hot at the same time. But but move forward to to when, when, when she was having the encounter with the Holy Spirit. I was like, all right, I don't know about this. This is not necessarily, like... I can't really believe in this. If I'm going to believe in something, I'm going to believe in the Quran. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm opening the Quran more and just, you know, I'm like, I don't know, you know, yeah. like I'm just reading the Bible. I'm like, I don't know about this. Yeah. He, you just didn't have that like encounter yourself. Yeah. Um, and then I get <laughs> woken up probably a month after I had gotten saved and, um, Adam just woke me up and was like, I saw Jesus in a dream, like he is God. Yep. Point <laughs> and blank, it was like the very first thing he said when he woke up. And so yeah, Jesus came to you in a dream. Yeah. Um, so, so one night I'm sleeping obviously, and all of a sudden I'm literally I don't whether in the body or in the spirit I don't know what was happening, but I literally know that I was running towards Jesus who was in the clouds. Mm-hmm. I literally, and, 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 and so, you know, he is the great I am. And so he never, you know, like, you know, it's him. My dad even asked me when I was, when I was telling him about my dream, I was like, I saw Jesus, he is God. And my dad was just like, you know, like people see great prophets and stuff. I'm like, yeah. no, you, I know yeah. he is God. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I saw him there and, and what, what really got me. So at the end of the dream, you know, crazy stuff was happening you know it's 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 i'm i'm there i'm in the spirit there and he took me there and so then i'm coming out of it i'm almost in this sort of lobby and i perceive it to be an angel writing something down in this on this desk and i'm sitting and i'm sweating profusely and i just say to him like nice try you know uh, these aren't in my terms and conditions and he just looks at me and says he like just looks up and says you don't have any terms and conditions and I wake up and I just know I'm set free. <laughs> yeah. And like you like <laughs> interpret that or re- as like you being set free from Islam. Exactly. From and especially because spirits. like you were always told like you're, you know how it is in like, um, like Muslim countries, like you don't have a choice to check the religion yeah. of Muslim. You were born. Yeah. Muslim. If your father's Muslim, you're Muslim. you're Muslim. So that was something told over and over again to you. Like you are, whether you yeah. think it, whether you, whatever you are. And so yeah. it was like, that was being broken off of you and you woke up knowing that you was Yeah. Gone. So amazing. Yeah. So like crazy. crazy <laughs> so from that moment forward, I did take us some time to like get into a church, <laughs> um, but we just like dove into the Bible and just gave our lives to Jesus. I was set free from mm. like smoking weed like immediately. Um, and then for like guilt and shame and depression and insecurity and kind of like all of these things that I had like dealt with throughout my life, that has been a sanctification process that um, God has taken us on through deliverance, mm-hmm. through casting out demons that we picked up from this yeah. lifestyle and so it continues to be um you know we both have gone through deliverance since then yeah. and it continues to be like you know bringing down those strongholds that we've built up in our mind but it's so crazy yeah. to think about like looking back at who we were and just like oh my goodness oh my, i know where we're at now is we are married we have a baby girl we are continuing to seek and serve mm-hmm. jesus and just grow in our faith. Yeah, we, he's not schizophrenic. Praise, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're he's, you're not on any medication. Nope. Completely delivered. Has never Healed, had suffered. anything remotely similar happen mm-hmm. since. And that diagnosis was a for life. You will be on some sort of medication in therapy. You, Indefinitely. It's, yes. It's a literal, if you want to call it, terminal illness. You That's what, what they. Yeah. There's no cure. Basically. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> yeah, but free. God, yeah. So, um, we're we're doing good, and yeah. we're, we're just... baptized in water and in fire, and yeah. we're part of an amazing church. Yep. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And I guess just like in conclusion, if you're watching this and you do not believe in Jesus or you have like reservations, um, I just want to say that I used to be of the belief that Christianity was bigotry, like that it, it was like a white man's religion. It was oppressive and it could not be further from the truth. It is where true freedom is because true freedom has some sort of bounds if we we're left to do whatever we wanted whenever we wanted we would destroy ourselves like we are self-destructive by nature and that is because of the sin that has entered into the world and so god's love is it has bounds and i just think of like we have a baby like it's just are we create a safe environment for our baby our yeah. baby cannot do whatever she wants to do in love we don't let her and that's god's love that's the type of love he has and so I just pray that you seek him, that you turn to Jesus and you start to think about where you're going mm. to spend eternity because this life is so short. You're not promised tomorrow. And maybe even if you get 80 years, that's nothing compared to forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And um, so I just pray that you just begin to have it, a mindset of where am I going after this? And um, you give Jesus a try. You've tried all these other things. You've tried drugs, partying, career ambitions, even if it's not negative seeming. You know, you try to get the perfect body to whatever you think is going to complete you. You're seeking that thing. It won't. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only thing that the missing piece in us is Jesus. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just pray that you find him and you begin to serve him and give your life to him yeah. because that is where true peace joy and fulfillment really really is um not in all these other religions and in the things yeah. of the world muhammad is offer. dead buddha is dead yep. but jesus is alive and yes. at the right hand of god yeah 100 percent. um thanks for listening and i just hope you have a blessed day mm -hmm. yeah Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this Testimony Tuesday video. I really pray that you are blessed by it. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Heaven and Healing podcast channel if you haven't already. We go live on this channel every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. So set your notification bell and come back and see us really soon. And do consider partnering with the Heaven and Healing Ministry. There's a QR code up on the screen for you to become a monthly partner. Or if you just feel led to sow a one-time seed, there are different options to do so down below in the episode description. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded, only made possible through the generosity of the audience. So anything at all means so much to us. We thank you for your support and prayers. God bless. Jesus loves you.